Well, good evening uh, once again, everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our uh, fall open house for this evening. I want to thank everyone who registered and who, are, who were able to get into today's meeting. Um, we really appreciate you being here and we're hopeful that information that's shared tonight will help you and your families and specifically our students uh, matriculate and manage through uh, high school. And uh, we hope that you have a lot of good information from tonight. Before we begin, before we begin, let me go through a couple of housekeeping things for tonight on this Zoom meeting. I'm sure many of you have been on countless Zoom meetings uh, over the last year and a half. And so just like this one, we're going to have some protocols for how we're going to manage the next 30 or 40 minutes or so. Uh, first thing is that be mindful of your surroundings. And so if you have your your video on, you can certainly have it on, that's totally fine. Just know that I'm recording today's meeting and I'm gonna share this video on our social media platforms and our parent newsletter. Um, so at some points in this, this meeting, your, your camera may pop up. And so if you don't want that to be the case, just uh, turn your camera off and uh, always stay muted. Uh, there'll be opportunities throughout this meeting where I will ask for questions. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Uh, Mr. Rushton, who's one of our administrators, is monitoring the chat along with Mr. Winder, who's our 12th grade administrator, and they'll read those questions to me and we'll answer them as best as we can. If you're in a situation where you can't do that, maybe you're driving or you're something like that, then we'll allow you to unmute and you can ask the question from that standpoint. But if you're able to type it into the chat, we prefer that most, most uh, we prefer that option uh, first and foremost. Secondly, uh, just be mindful that we'll be monitoring all of the aspects of the Zoom meeting, like I said before, so we can um, send it out widely to all of our friends who could not be here uh, this evening. Uh, with that, I also want to introduce some very special people who will be joining me today. We have our PTSA co-president. So we have Ms. Amanda Cox and we have Ms. Carol Ann Good who will be joining us this evening. Amanda Cox is who you see before you right now who will be representing our PTSA and uh, sharing the budget and uh, seeking a vote for the budget. Before we go any further, I wanna begin our evening right now with the playing of the Star Spangled Banner. So if you allow me to share my screen, I'll do that right now and then we'll get going. Oh, say can you see So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fights for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red Awesome. And so that is the, the wonderful, wonderful musical talents from our world famous chorus program. Big shout out to Mrs. Amy Moyer for leading our wonderful students and their wonderful voices. And I'm, I'm sure you agree like me, we are very fortunate to have uh, such great talented students and a great teacher who leads that group. I'm not going to transition over to Miss Amanda Cox, who will lead us into this portion this evening on PTSA. Mrs. Cox. Thank you so much, Dr. Grant. Again, um, like Dr. Grant mentioned, um, my name is Amanda Cox. I'm one of the co-presidents of PTSA this year alongside of Tara Posner. And we are super excited. We've got a great board this year uh, with Carol Ann Good as our vice president, Linda Vanderwood as our treasurer, and Christina Tankersley as our secretary. And we're just looking forward to a great year of serving you all um, and working with Dr. Grant and the staff and teachers and the students at, uh, at Wade Hampton. So we're so glad to be here. I have a couple of things that we just wanted to go over um, and kind of just um, present to you guys this evening. 
whether you are new to Wade Hampton or you are a seasoned Wade Hampton parent, we first of all want to encourage you guys to join PTSA. Um, it is a yearly membership for $5 and you can do that um, very easily. I can I'll tell you guys some links that you can do that um, very quickly today. It, um, that money helps to benefit Wade Hampton. It also goes to help with some of the state uh, programs that we provide like reflections and things like that. So um, we would encourage you to do that. And when you are going on to be able to uh, join the membership page, there you will see a prompt that, um, that if you have an interest in being a volunteer. And we're very excited that uh, we're able to volunteer more this year. And we just want to encourage all of the parents to um, be able to engage. There will be lots of opportunities. You can serve in the general store uh, during teacher appreciation um, activities throughout the year, the big teacher appreciation week. Um, there will be lots of opportunities for volunteerism. So we just want to encourage you to kind of plug in and um, learn some more information about that. The way that you can do that is you can visit the Wade Hampton homepage. If you click on the drop down box, there's a student parent resource link there. And under that is the PTSA uh, page. And you can just click on that. You'll see a prompt called the member hub link and you go there. That's where you can join the membership there for $5. And you can also indicate if you'd like to volunteer or not. Another easy way is if you're um, on Facebook, you can go onto Facebook and like our page please like us. Um, it's Wade Hampton PTSA. Um, it's a red ball cap. It's um, easy to be able to spot that. And really that is a great kind of one-stop shop to be able to see what's going on. Um, we are posting things, you know, for PTSA, light membership um, and things like that, but also just the daily workings of things that are going on at the school. Um, and also we are in the process of selling spirit wear this year. And so we have sweatshirts, t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts. Um, Carolyn Good has led the charge for us to um, have some great looking door hangers um, that are going to be sold coming up. I'm, I'm going to post some pictures of those this evening for $25. You can get a nice good looking Wade Hampton door hanger for your door and represent in your neighborhood. And so um, just some great ways that you can show your school spirit, and also be able to help support Wade Hampton. So we just want to encourage you to do that. Um, and one final thing, every year as a part of this open house, um, we always go over our proposed yearly budget. And so we will, um, since we're doing this virtually, um, we will virtually give you an opportunity to be able to do that. I'm going to post that in the chat link um, down below that you can click on. It's a Google link. Um, you'll enter your email and uh, you can be able to vote on that. I'm actually going to defer over to our treasurer, Linda Vanderwood. She's going to go over the, the budget for this year and explain that in a little bit more detail. Linda? Thank you. Um, I'm Linda Vanderwood, and um, this is the first time I have been treasurer. And so um, please bear with me because I really do not know what to, I'm doing on this. But I, I do know what I'm doing. It's just not speaking but uh, anyway, um, the income um, pretty much stayed the same as last year, um, ex except we are reducing the member fees since a lot of the money, the, the $5 goes to state and national dues. So that's a, just a liability. So we re reduced that a little. Um, the expenses um, for the store and for all the clothes and, and the spirit week, um, is there the insurance and then the the special projects we do um, with special olympics and the other um fundraisers we give money to um and to the teachers so that's that's about um covers the budget very good thank you linda so you'll be able to see that the um, expenses and the income for the year is $24,950. Um, and so, and that is pretty much on point with exactly what we did last year. Um, and so 
hoping, being hopeful that we'll be able to continue and um, have all the normal events that we normally have. Um, and so we wanted to reflect that in the budget this year. So um, we would encourage you that budget um, voting link will be posted until September the 30th, so this Thursday. And so we would encourage all of you to go on and uh, enter your email, review the budget again, and then also be able to uh, vote if you approve that budget or not. If, um, if you miss it in the chat link here, you can also find it on the PTSA page on website, on the Wade Hampton website, and then it's also posted on Facebook as well. So um, those, those two things. We uh, thank you guys. We um, thank you for allowing us to serve you all. We are looking forward to a great year and um, go generals. Thank you very, very much, uh, Mrs. Cox. I'll tell you, many people always ask me when I'm out in the community or out and about, they say, Dr. Grant, what makes Wade Hampton special? And without missing a beat, I tell them, our parents and our community, you know, our kids are great because of the support of our parents and because of the, what you do to support our school. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but what we do here is not normal. Not many high schools can talk about parents coming in and volunteering in the student store or working concession stand or volunteering and giving money for teachers to, uh, for small grants to support them. And I mean, it's just a phenomenal, nominal culture that I really appreciate you. This is on behalf of our kids, on behalf of our kids and our staff, this PTSA is very strong and we encourage you to continue being that way uh, for the benefit of our children. So, so thank you very much. And that's as principal, I say that, and as daddy, because I got two kids here too. And so I appreciate everything that you do, PT, PTSA and um, Amanda and all your whole crew. I really appreciate everything you guys do. Leslie, I see you and I love you. All right, uh, so Amanda, I'm gonna unpin you and you stay around. because Now I'm gonna talk a little bit and uh, let's, talk about, let's talk about more about what's happening this year and the vision going forward uh, for this year. I wanna give you as the parents and students, if you're on the call and teachers and just general community members, some idea and glimpse into what we're thinking about for this year, what things we are intentionally trying to do for the benefit of our children. Uh, we all know that Wade Hampton has a very um, valued tradition. We've maintained a tradition over half a century and we're proud of the accomplishments of all our students and faculty. And um, we know that the strength that emanates from this school comes from those partnerships that I talked about before between our students and our faculty, the wealth of parental and community involvement and the love of learning that exists as a result. This school year, we opened with over 1800 students in attendance and many more are on the waiting list. We have students who are in our virtual, the Greenville County virtual program who started in that setting. And there's some who are petitioning to come back to an in-person learning experience. And then there's some students who may desire to go to virtual school as well. I want parents to know that there's a process for that to occur. And if you go to our counselor's website, you'll see what that is. Uh, there's posted pretty much step-by-step step of how we can transition between those two environments. Wade Hampton High School is helping all our students develop the world-class skills and life and career characteristics as outlined in our profile of a South Carolina graduate by providing several things. One, a safe and caring and academic learning environment. And then two, a clear vision and mission around what we stand for, which is to educate, inspire, and empower. And we truly believe in those three words. Those three words help us to dictate how we drive the pathway for our kids to understand what they need to do. We want each of our students to work diligently to implement a, and have a personalized plan for them upon graduating high school. We know that getting the high school diploma is not enough. We already know that they're gonna get a high school diploma. That's a given when it comes to, the, when you walk through the doors of this building, we're not worried about, worried about that part. What we're concerned about is do our kids have a pathway and a plan for what happens after graduation date? And that's what our focus is on. We would especially like to extend a very, very warm welcome this year to our incoming freshman class, the class of 2025. They've already begun their high school career here, at, here as generals and we're what, four and a half weeks in and they're, they're really fitting in now. Uh, they're really finding their way. And you know, the first day of school, it was you know, the big open eyes were there and you know, all the kids in the hallways and just managing to get from one place to the other. Are you gonna be late to class and things of that nature? But they've begun to really find their footing 
um, in the building. And what we're telling them is that there are so many opportunities at their fingertips here. You know, I am personally challenging them and hopefully trying to inspire them and motivate them to grow each day based on their unique learning profiles. And likewise, I'm going to personally encourage all of our students to become involved in all the extracurricular offerings that we have available at our school. You know, there's a strong connection in educational research between the involvement in school sponsored organizations and academic success, and whether it be the academic team, uh, several academic teams, whether it's athletics, like robotics, anything in between, we encourage all of our students to get involved in that. So I encourage you as parents to have conversations with your students and look on the website and look at our social media and we see those clubs pop up, encourage them to come out and just see what it's about and just try to get involved. You know, we know that the accomplishments and the recognition of our school confirms us as one of the top high schools in South Carolina, and I would even say in the nation. You know, while this year it's ripe with challenges brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic and now this new Delta variant um, uh, that's existing out here, we're still aiming for school to be no different. You know, we're really, really focusing on trying to create as much normalcy, if we can define normalcy, as possible. You know, our students once again outpaced the district, the state, and the nation on averages um, in most major measurements of academic performance. And we have evidences of this, you know, such evidence as the U.S. News Reward Report that came out and ranked us as the number one high school here in Greenville and number 16 in the state. You know, as a matter of fact, we are ranked number one in algebra one proficiency, number two in biology proficiency, number three in U.S. history, and number one in our AP rank. We know that students are more likely to succeed when they are well-rounded, engaged in connections outside the classroom, and they have that strong extracurricular programs to support the inside the classroom piece as well. Now, I know I'm talking a lot about, you know, academic piece of it, but let me take a little bit of minutes right now to talk about another piece that we're very proud that's been added this year. And I know I've, I've sent information to parents about the new Wade Hampton High School advisory program. We are very, very proud that this exists now in our building. You see, because the Wade Hampton High School Advisory Program promotes probably the most important thing that we can ever do for children, which is meaningful relationships between staff and students while providing them academic support as students. We are designed right now to have weekly meetings every Wednesday right after the second block. And in this weekly meeting with their advisor, students experience a more personalized learning environment with a structure and a set of practices that help them to monitor and encourage academic progress along with college and career readiness. Perhaps the most talked about benefit of a good advisory program are the positive relationships that's created in this, in, this, in this setting. Advisories help us to build sense of community in school, which is important for preventing you know, alienation and not feeling connected. And we know that there's many studies out there that show that the more the kids can be connected to their school, the better they're gonna do not only academically, but social, emotionally as well. In addition to providing our students with current academic performance, advisors are gonna be there to help students plan for their future academic careers. We can deliver many important uh, curriculum in the advisory session, which includes social, emotional learning and just post-secondary planning as well. Many important decisions are gonna be made in these high school years about whether or not the students are going to graduate from high school and then go straight to college, maybe go to a trade school, a community college, or maybe the military. Uh, advisory serves as that time for good in-depth discussion about future goals and aspirations. I'll put it to you this way. All of us can probably remember as adults, some adult tapping you on the shoulder and giving you good advice about something you need to be, that you've been thinking about or struggling with or grappling with throughout your life. And we wanna be that for all of our kids. We want to make sure that every student has at least one adult, at the very minimum, at least one adult in the building that truly know them deeply and that can be an advocate for them in the building. Some of our kids are going to have multiple ones. They may have an athletic coach or a club advisor and a counselor, a principal that knows them deeply. But we want to guarantee that every kid has at least one adult, and that's where the advisory program comes from. Let me take a minute and remind you about several upcoming um, events and reminders. Um, as you know, right now, I spoke briefly about being in this pandemic that we're in. And so because we're in this pandemic, it is very likely that sometimes students may have to quarantine at home because of recent close contact or exposure 
to someone who has tested positive within the building. Um, three things I want you to be aware of. One is the three ways by which a student will have to quarantine at home. Students will have to quarantine if they've been determined to be a close contact, if they are not fully vaccinated, if they were within six feet of the individual that's tested positive and neither one of them were wearing a mask. And the third one is if they have not, if they've had COVID within the last 90 days, that would also prevent them from having to quarantine. In the event that a student has to quarantine, we still are going to provide academic support for students. And so we continue to monitor all of those safety protocols. We want kids to know how they can still stay engaged with their classrooms. Be aware that when students must quarantine from class, they should still engage in their Google Classroom for each course and return back to school when they can return back with their work completed. Teachers are going to do one of two things. They're either going to choose to live stream their class for those that are on quarantine, or they're gonna provide assignments to students via the Google Classroom and then tell the student how they can engage with them personally, whether it's a Google Meet or a live stream that they may do with that student. But one of those two things will occur um, at that time if they in fact have to be on quarantine. Um, I'm gonna pause right there because I know I've talked about a whole lot. I wanna see what questions may that parents may have right now. Mr. Rushton is managing the chat room and we'll see what questions you have. And then I'm gonna go back and give you some other reminders about the year, things that are coming up that I want you to be aware of. Mr. Rushton, do we have any questions? So far, there weren't any questions that have come in yet. Um, I did post membership for the PTA there and also a way that you can click on the form to vote for the budget that was presented both by them. But as of right this moment, there weren't any questions for you yet. All right. Parents, if you have questions, don't uh, remember, drop them in the chat. We'll be glad to answer them as I go through. Uh, let me also, let me go back and give you some uh, further information about things that's coming up. In our parent newsletter, there's several things that we are highlighting in there. I really want you to be aware of these because these are important things coming up. One is the Backpack Buddies program. It's a food pantry program. The Wade Hampton Pantries Club is excited to get started this year. Uh, we have a weekly selection of free food for our students and their families to choose from that anyone can sign up to receive anonymously. Pickup is weekly on Thursdays and Fridays in the Wade Hampton's front office. For more information and to sign up to receive food, visit the link that's located in our parent newsletter. I'm also gonna place it in the chat here as well um, so that you can have access to it as well. Also be mindful that underclassmen dues are also come, are happening now. Uh, underclassmen, which are grades nine through 11, each year we collect dues to support the projects associated with the corresponding graduation class. Class dues are only $5. This also applies to our virtual students and our in-person students as well. Parents and students can, can pay these dues in one of three ways. You can go and pay your first block teacher, you can pay in the front office, or you can pay online at myschoolbucks.com. There'll be a drop-down menu for class dues and you just put in there what, what grade you're in and it goes to that. This Wednesday is gonna be college application day. I'm really excited about this. Our college application day event will take place uh, like I said, this Wednesday in the library, students who have signed up can get help completing college applications and get their questions answered by college admissions representatives who will be here from all around the state. There will also be fee waiver codes provided so students can apply for free to certain colleges. Can't beat that. We also plan to have representatives from the military for students who are also interested in military service and their college funding sources. We will again ask all teachers and staff to wear college and military gear to support this event. Um, so we encourage your students to wear their favorite college gear as well. So put them on. I'm having my Gamecock shirt on. I may even put my South Carolina State one on. I'll, I'll make a decision on Tuesday night. Seniors have specified 45 minute time slots that they have signed up for to attend this event. School counselors will also be present to help and support our students. So please remind them if they're coming to bring their social security number with them as this is needed to complete most applications. In align with that as well, let me talk about the financial aid meetings that are coming up as well. Greenville County School District will be sponsoring four virtual financial aid meetings during the month of October. So it's coming up in a couple of, in the, you know, in a week or so. These meetings will be helpful in us learning and you learning about the financial resources that are available for students to attend college and what steps need to be taken to start that process. 
Information about the FAFSA will be presented, and it's an important step in qualifying for many important financial aid opportunities. So if you check out our parent newsletter and our website, there's a PDF, fly, PDF flyer there that has all the meeting links for those four meetings. So get on there, mark your calendars to attend one of those events, even if you don't have a senior this year. So always get practice if you have a freshman or sophomore or junior just to attend those financial aid meetings just so you can get familiar with what, all the language and lingo so you can be prepared for when they are seniors, you'll know exactly what to do. We have a senior parent night coming up. The senior parent night meeting, I'm sorry, the senior parent night meeting has already happened. Um, and there's a recording that's posted on the school council's webpage for the class of 22. It's only the class of 22, 2022 pay, uh, tab. It has a wealth of information, so it's recommended. I highly encourage you to go there and view it if you are not able to attend that session. Uh, I want to remind you about School Links. School Links is a new program that replaced Naviance as students, college, and career portfolio. It's like an online portfolio. Uh, there are many features on this portfolio that the school counseling department still has, and they're learning each and every day how to share this out with our kids. Students can now access and download their transcripts by logging into School Links account via Student Backpack, which is located in the educational apps in their Chromebook. And seniors will use School Links to track their college applications and request transcripts that need to be sent out to colleges. There's a video guide there and a PDF guide there as well. Just go to our school counseling webpage and it'll be right there for you. Earlier, we talked about PTSA. I can't, I'll be remiss if I did not mention our PTSA Reflections Program. Um, so we ask everybody every year, you know, you have students who really enjoy arts and music and dance and have some interest in writing, producing film or, you know, taking photos, great photographers. Um, your help is needed to share this year's Wade Hampton High School PTA Reflections Art Program. Uh, this program launched on September 13th. And this year's theme is, I will change the world by, and students take that theme, that prompt, and we want them to share and post and really uh, think about applying to be a part of that program. Submission guidelines and entry forms are located right on our Wade, our Wade Hampton High School webpage. It's located on our social media. The deadline to make a submission to this uh, program is gonna be Tuesday, November the 23rd. So please take an opportunity to get in there and look at it, and I really encourage you to be a part of that. It's a great thing that happens each year for kids. The last thing I want to leave you with is a outline of what our goals are for this year, because I want you to help us to monitor that. I want you to hold us accountable for managing and monitoring those goals that we have put before us. Every year, we look to increase our graduation rate, and we've done that for the past several years. This past year, I'm sorry, the year of the 2019-2020 school year, um, my graduation rate got up to 92%, 92.74 to be exact. This past year during the pandemic, our graduation rate dipped down slightly. We finished the year right at 88%. Uh, there's several reasons and rationales behind that, but we have a plan of action ready to put that back upward in the right trajectory. Uh, we know last year was a challenging year. There's many families who um, could not finish the year for a variety of reasons. Um, but we have some remediation planning that we do. We have some additional funding that's been provided to us through the Federal uh, CARES Act Fund. The district has done a wonderful, awesome job in helping us to manage those funds and to allocate them in the proper places to make sure we truly are targeted and remediating our students in the proper way. And so we have a great plan for that. Um, so that's one of our goals, to get our graduation rate back to where we'd like for it to be. Our goal for this year is 90%, which is going to be uh, 3%, I'm sorry, 91%, um, which is 3% higher than where we ended this past year. Um, and if we can get to 92% where we were the previous year, that'll be even awesome. But we want to get that going back in the right trajectory. The second goal we have this year is we want our kids to have a really robust understanding and self-knowledge about social emotional learning and how to deal with anxiety and other stressors that come in their teenage years. And so that's where the advisory program comes into play. Um, we really are going to be very, very intentional with giving our kids the tools and the resources to manage their own social emotional being. We, we know that mental health is physical health. Mental health is health. And not only do it's important for adults to attune to our needs social emotionally, 
We also want to do that same thing for our kids and just give them the tools to be able to do that. And so we're going to be very, very intentional with understanding how we assign homework and how we assign projects to make sure it's meaningful and then help kids know how to, when they reach that brick wall, how to manage it, how to seek help when they need to and not try to take all the stress on by themselves. And so we're going to be really working hard on that this year. And the third major thing this year is we've been really focusing on raising rigor in our classrooms. Our teachers have done a very, very good job this year in attuning to our professional development plans this year. The word rigor has always been kicked around in education and in the, in the atmosphere for many years. We've been very intentional in, in um, being very specific about what we mean by rigor. And we've defined that in very specific ways. This year, we are gonna be working in the area of high level questions as a way of teachers designing high level questions for our kids to be able to engage with. And we want our kids asking high level questions. I'll give you an example. And some of you parents, if you wanna be vulnerable, I'll be vulnerable with you and you can raise your hand if that's the case. Some of us have been in environments where um, you may have set it for a test or a quiz and you did very, very well on that test or quiz. But if we were to ask you questions about that test or quiz two weeks later, some of us may not be able to respond. I know Ms. Cox would, she would be able to say exactly what it was, but Dr. Grant have been in situations where I just studied for just the test, but I didn't really engage in the learning of it, right? In certain situations, our kids are in that same situation. They, we wanna get out of the environment of just being compliant professionals and we want them to be really engaged and that comes with high level questions. And so for us as teachers and administrators, we wanted to design our lessons. So we're asking very high level questions, getting them to really think about what they're doing, truly processing and thinking about it versus just completing an assignment. And then and vice versa, we want our students to be conversing among themselves and with the teacher in asking high level questions and looking for more clarity and really being intentional with the learning. So that's the next major goal for us is to engage and get our kids ready for that journey and really increasing rigor in our classrooms. So with that, I, those are the major things we're thinking about for this year. We're gonna to continue to engage with you throughout the year. Uh, please follow us on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, follow our webpage. We try to update that on a regular basis and then stay engaged with our teachers um, and ask them questions that may benefit your child. Tonight, if this was a regular open house night, you would have left this environment in the auditorium and you would have had a way of going to the classroom to meet your teachers. Obviously, we're not gonna do that tonight physically, but you can still do that. And I wanna show you how you can do that. I'm gonna share my screen here in a quick moment, and I'm gonna go to our website, our school website, which is not there, right here. On our website, under the About tab, there's a Wade Hampton High School tour. I invite you to come here and take a virtual tour of our school. Um, there's an opening message from our student council uh, body president, student body president, Miss Elizabeth Green. She's a phenomenal student. And then there's some messages from administrators, but then you'll notice that we've got this uh, divvied out by location. So if you were to click on first floor, for example, that will take you to specific places on the front floor, places throughout the building that you need to meet certain people. The other way you can engage with your, to get answers that you normally would have done tonight is to go directly to a teacher's page. And so when I go to, I'm sorry, let me click out here one second. If you were to go to a teacher's, um, uh, go to a teacher's page, and I'm gonna choose uh, the first teacher I see, Ms. Harris, who's a business teacher, when you go to that teacher's page, there's going to be a Google form for you to sign up for appointments and an open house video that you can play that Miss uh, Miss Harris or the teacher has designed just for tonight's purpose, introducing you to their class, giving you information about that course and things of that nature. So I invite you to visit the website, go to your teachers, uh, your students' teachers' pages, um, and just engage with that video. Hear more about what their vision is for that classroom specifically. And then if you wanna have an individual meeting with that teacher, there's a Google form where you can sign up to meet with them at your convenience, okay? I'm gonna pause right there and see if we have any questions for me tonight. And we'll go from there, Mr. Rushton. So one of the questions was, can anyone participate with the college day? And I've stated that that would be open to all 
people on Wednesday and gave a link to our counseling. And then the That's next correct. was how long will the teachers' videos and Google Forms be available available beyond tonight? Uh, they're going to be up for a long time. We're going to keep them up there probably for the rest of the semester um, until the new classes come in because it's going to be very relevant information. In terms of, uh, and then the same thing with the Google Forms, you can always request a meeting with the teacher um, at any time, and that's going to be the avenue by which you can do that, or you can email them directly. Then the next question was, when will the Spirit Week activity calendars be posted? Spirit Week is going to be, we're going to announce that shortly within the next week or so. Uh, Spirit Week is going to be the week of October 22nd to the 29th. And we are sponsoring the Greenville County Cancer Society. I'm very, very proud to be a partner with them this year. Our goal for them this year is 200000 is going to be the goal for them and their proposal. And so we're looking forward to supporting uh, them this year. But we'll be sharing the calendar uh, within the next week. Student Council is working feverishly, very, very hard. Uh, to get that going. I will tell you there's one event that they've already announced, which is the annual yard sale. Uh, we're going to have the yard sale at the Frazee Center. I'm sorry, not the Frazee Center, at the Meyer Center. Um, and they've already placed in the parent newsletter a way for parents to sign up and to donate um, items that can be sold at the yard sale. So just check out the parent newsletter. Um, and that'll also be included in the schedule of calendar events that'll come out uh, in the next week or so. Are there questions in the chat, Mr. Rushton? That's the last question in the chat. All right. Well, once again, I thank you everyone very much for being here this evening. If you have any questions for me at any time, please feel free to give me a call. My email is ccgrant at greenville.k12.sc.us. And my phone number here at school is 864-355-0119. Um, thank you very much for attending. Everyone have a great evening.